Namaskaram to everyone. <clears throat> so, uh, suppose you were in school, suppose you were in school, summer vacations you went home, 14th April, you were supposed to go back to school, but the school said the vacation extends for one more month. Would you celebrate or cry about it? I'm sure you would celebrate. Well, uh, most probably we are heading into that situation just now. Yesterday's celebration was to just to pep you up so that you are ready. <laughs> <laughs> Already a uh, few Indian states have declared they will extend the lockdown. There may be some relaxations for certain type of activity, work, industry, but geographical lockdown will continue. District level blockades, state level blocks, and no airline, no railways, this will definitely continue. So, uh, those of you who are on a spiritual path, or so you thought, grand time for you. Those of you who are very strategic thinkers, fantastic time for you. 
Those of you who thought you are musicians or artists or something, absolutely miraculous time for you. Those of you who thought you were actually students, genuine I mean to say, not that you're going to school or college, I mean to say you're a real student, you want to learn. Absolutely beautiful time for you. The only concern is uh, those who are at the bottom end of the economic structure, uh, what will happen to them. That's why in this region we are stepping out and seeing what to do. Many of our young volunteers, even today a batch left, they were there to see me just now. They're leaving the ashram, they're leaving the yoga center. That means they won't be able to come back till everything is over and when they come back, they will go into anywhere between fourteen to twenty-eight days of quarantine. So it's a self-exile that they're taking this step to serve the rural society around us. We bow down to their commitment. Well, uh, the, the medical aid in terms of masks, gloves, some safety suits for medical personnel and others that our Chinese volunteers uh, sent uh, has just cleared the customs in Delhi, should be here tomorrow or max day after tomorrow. So those things are happening, but the biggest challenge is going to be to provide pharmaceutical medicines that may become necessary large scale, above all to provide nourishment for those people who have no ability to find nourishment unless they have employment. Three weeks, uh, they've crossed their limit of managing with their own resources already, the pressure is on. So, we've already started that work but this will go on increasing the pressure, the financial pressure on us. Uh, in the last two days, many of you have uh, contributed in a big way and supported us. We look forward to a continued support because this is going to continue for some more time. It is not over very soon. <clears throat> this lockdown is a way of preempting. Many people are asking these questions, nobody's sick, why are they doing this block, uh, lockdown? My business is going, my work is going, I can't take a walk, I can't smoke, I can't drink, what is this? Well, this is preemptive action, you need to understand. Maybe if you have lived a compulsive life, you don't understand what is preemptive action. Anybody who is successful in their business, in their life in various ways, always take preemptive action. They don't wait for problems to overwhelm them and then take action. They take action before problems come. That is the significance of being human. All other creatures will deal with their problems after it hits them. Human beings are supposed to foresee problems and preempt them. This happened. Shankaran Pillai was in New York, not now, before the virus. <laughs> right now, New York is a bad place to be. Unfortunately, the numbers... Uh, <sighs> today's numbers are bad. The last twenty-four hours, nearly twelve hundred deaths in America, United States of America, crossed nine thousand six hundred. Spain, 223 in a day, Italy still going strong, 525 deaths in 24 hours, France, 518, UK, 621, while India, 32. Uh, India has the lowest number of deaths per million population. Mm, I think the lockdown has made a big difference, but now to really tighten the lockdown in such a way that it actually works. Because if one rat scurries away, 
that one rat is enough to in, in, you know, infect a whole population. So, uh, but rats are not the carriers, you know. It's human beings, but there are some people who are in a certain mode. But uh, Shankaran Pillai was in New York City. And he went into a very expensive restaurant, pulled out a twenty-dollar bill and tried to give it to the waiter, you keep this. The waiter said, what, you want a table to be booked? You can go and book straight away. You don't have to give me this money. He said, no, no, you keep it, I'll tell you, keep it, take it. He took it. Then he said, I don't need a table, later in the evening, I'm coming here with my new girlfriend. When I come here, you say, no tables available. I will take her to a cheaper restaurant. <laughs> but keep the twenty dollars, <clears throat> just say that tables are just not available today. Preemptive action. But there are some people, why all these years have been like this only? Why should I change my way? What is the problem? Why can't I go? Why can't I speak in your spa face like this, as I've always been doing? You were always doing this, we were just enduring with your bad breath, but now you're bringing death. Bad breath also can kill sometimes. <laughs> now this is a good time to change your civilization, that you don't spit in each other's face and talk. Time to do this, permanently, I'm saying, not just now. It's a time to change many things, but this is how I've been doing, is a problem. A man was driving in Tennessee. This happens sometimes in Tennessee. And uh, Without any warning, a local pickup truck which was driving with some kind of a load suddenly turned off into a, sm a small dirt track. Nothing short of a miracle that he did not hit the truck, he braked frantically and somehow stopped just short. But the pickup truck went away. He got so mad, he chased the truck, stopped him and started yelling. Well, he just looked, what's the matter with you? I always go down this road. Why didn't you show your hand? Why didn't you indicate? No, I always go down this road. That's how I do things. You're supposed to know. So, there are a lot of local people like this who assume things, oh, this is the way I do it. No, a time has come that you don't function out of old habits, you function consciously. This could be life and death for somebody else or to yourself. So, very, very important right now, more than government bringing about lockdowns after lockdowns, every citizen standing up and doing the right thing, this is most important. Otherwise, government can announce lockdowns, you keep spreading around yourself, then there is no use. You should understand, this is not about the government, this is not about the administration, this is not about the health officials. This is about your life and the lives around you. Your behavior is going to determine that. This is both an onerous responsibility and a privilege that simply by doing nothing you can save people's lives, how wonderful is that? But unfortunately, in the last two days, the number of medical professionals who have become victims and have died is unusually high because they're working overtime, 
as they work over time beyond a certain limit, their immune system comes down. As their endurance comes down, immune system comes down and because of this they're getting infected and fatalities have begun to rise among the doctors and nurses. All those people who behave irresponsibly and say, why can't I do this, why can't I do that? I want you to think of a scenario where if the medical professionals in the country and in the world decided enough is enough, if you are not bothered about your life, why are we sticking our necks out and they stop coming to work? As you can imagine what will happen, then fatalities will rise into millions. This lockdown is a preemptive, preemptive action to see that such things don't happen. Every one of you must not only cooperate, do whatever tools you have in your hands to convey to every... every citizen in the country and in the world to see that they behave responsibly. As a generation, if we behave responsibly, we can pass this with minimum losses. Already, I think the death toll is nearing hundred thousand. It's hitting hundred thousand mark. That is not a small loss, but still compared to what can happen, it is a small loss. So let us try to contain this at the min minimum possible level, because if we don't do conscious action, responsible action, it can completely... Uh, it can completely harangue this generation in so many different ways, not just in terms of health, in so many different ways. The very way we have been living, we may have... we may not be able to live, nobody can afford to live like that anymore, it may become like that. So it's very important that we pass through these next few weeks, whatever number of weeks, really sensibly. Hmm? Questions? Sadhguru, this question is from Priyanka. Namaskaram Sadhguru, a lot of times you share strong views on political matters, but sometimes I don't agree. I might be a part of the left-wing liberals which you call as fanatics or WhatsApp university folk. How do I reconcile with you being my guru and yet, yet us having these opposing views on political matters? <laughs> I'm far more left than you imagine. But I am not crazy left where you will make sure people are left out of all development and all possibilities. If that is your idea of left, that is not my idea of left. My idea of left is a more fair and just administration. I just said more fair and just. There is no such thing as absolutely fair and just society. There's no such thing anywhere. It's never happened till now at least. Even people used to refer, Mahatma Gandhi used to continuously refer to Ramarajya as the just and fair society. Even there, I'm sure Rama's wife, Sita herself felt, this is very unfair, what's happening to me all her life. I'm sure his children absolutely felt it's absolutely unfair what's been done to them. And I'm sure at many points in his life, Rama himself felt it's unfair what's being done to him. So there has never been an absolutely fair society or an absolutely just society. But largely, most of the things are happening in a fair manner, that at least people have... people may not be equal, at least people have equal opportunity. That's all we can create. Having said that, Priyanka, I want to tell you, I have never express, expressed a political opinion. If I express my political opinions, uh, you will faint. So I've never expressed. I only pointed out a few facts. You will do not distinguish between what are facts and what are opinions, then there is a huge problem. If you believe that your opinion is much more sacred than people's will in a democratic society, then you have a fundamental problem.
you are looking for a total revolution. Total revolution in today's world also means total annihilation. These ideas of armed revolutions are from nineteenth century and early twentieth century. Time for those revolutions are over, considering just the weaponry that we have today. If the revolutionaries get the weapons and the forces get the weapons, all that will happen is destruction and death. Nothing more will happen. So armed revolution or the period for armed revolution, you are born a little too late. Yes, when we were young, we all thought about armed revolution, always. Those are the times of Charu Majumdar and Somalu and all grand stories and we all want to go there and fight. But time for that is over because now if you want to bring any change, especially in this country, you can only do it through democratic process. Democratic process means if two people stand for election, one will win, one will lose like in any other game. So if the losers want to pass laws, losers want to carry the trophy, you think that is fair? Is it fair those who lost the game will carry the trophy in their head? This is not fair, but right now that's what you're asking. People have elected a certain government. If they pass the laws, because of fundamental duty, once you get elected is to pass the laws. If they pass the laws, you say, no, 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 we should pass the laws. You cannot pass this law. You cannot say that. You can express your opinion, what is wrong with the law. You can write, you can vote against it in the parliament or assembly or wherever else, whatever other democratic body you are in. But you cannot say, an elected government should not pass laws, that's not democratic. Well, this whole left or people who think they are left, they're not left. I, I see the way they have structured their life, their ideas, their opinions, their emotions. Left means your life is not about yourself, your life is about the community, that's what communism is. I don't know what kind of left you are because your lifestyle doesn't show that you are left. Your attitude towards others does not show you are left. And you said, I'm a left liberal. You're definitely not liberal because only you have the freedom of speech and nobody else has. This is not liberal in my understanding. My idea of liberal is, whatever is in my heart, I will speak. You must listen to me and tell me what's wrong with what I have said. No, <laughs> you cannot point out one thing, you just say, no, I don't like it. Well, this is like a domestic situation. These things happen between husband and wife, should not happen between you and me. If there is something wrong, if you, there is something where you can point out, this is not correct, this is not logically correct, this is not factually correct, if you tell me, I will bow down to you and correct myself. But you simply don't like it. Well, what can I do if you don't like it? What can I do if you don't like it? People have elected a government. Government passes its laws. We have some concerns about a certain law. We can say, this is our concern, please fix it. But still it is their choice whether they want to fix it or they want to go ahead with it. If you are so concerned about the nation and you want to pass the laws, you must strive hard to win the next election. That's the only way you can do it in a democratic country. That is what democracy means. You lose the election and you want to pass the laws. Life doesn't work like that. It is just that you are not able to digest this simple fact. You think I'm expressing my opinion. This is not my opinion, this is the fundamental and the foundation of democratic process. So, you say, I will take it to the streets, my right to protest. 
you have right to protest for sure, but you have no right to disrupt even one citizen's life. You have no right to block the road, you have no right to block the highway, you have no right to cut off the water or electricity or whatever else that you're doing. You have no right to disrupt anybody's life, you have right to protest. You must ask for permission, find an area, sit there and protest. You have no right even to use a microphone and blast it into my home, you have no right. But you have a right to protest in proper platforms. Democratic process has enough platforms where you can protest. You have every right to protest, but do not misunderstand right to protest as right to disrupt. You want to do quit India movement now. What? You want to do non-cooperation movement now. You should have done it in 1936. Time for that is over. This is your country, this is your government. Now you say, no, it's not my government. That is not democratic, I want you to understand. Majority of the people when they elect a government, even if you don't like them, personally you may not like them, I'm not saying you must like them, but it's your government, it's government of India, government of Tamil Nadu, government of Karnataka, or whatever the state it is. It is not somebody's government. As everybody is referring to these days, it's become fashionable for everybody to say Modi government. It is not... in my mind, in my heart, it's not Narendra Modi's government. For me, this is India's government. Because it's government of India, I will support the government of India. Not because I'm somebody's fan, not because I belong to any political ideology, simply because I'm a citizen of this India, what that means to me means, means because I'm a citizen of this country, the country is offering a certain order, certain facility, certain fundamentals for us to live and work. For that, I bow down and say whatever the government says by law, I will follow that, I'll abide by that because that's a law. Oh, what the laws that you form, I don't agree. If you don't agree, there is a Supreme Court or a court where you can go. If it's in any way illegal, it'll get knocked down. But if it's legal and you still don't like it, you must win the next election. That's the only way. You don't have the necessary commitment to strive, to work for these five years and somehow win the election next time. You don't have such a commitment. You wanted to sit at home, and wine and dine all your life, but you protest about everything that the government does. I'm telling you, my attitude towards government of India is the same, irrespective of who is ruling the country right now. Because for me, government of India is ruling the nation, not Modi government or uh, Manmohan Singh government or somebody's government. In my mind and my heart, it is government of India and I will support. Well, you don't like that. Well, that means you don't like the democratic process. So you should become the prime minister without any effort. And what are your credentials? Only thing is you don't like what I say. That's the only credential you have. Now, between you and me as a guru, <laughs> uh, you must listen carefully. This happened, a group of friends went to a restaurant. They were all together boisterous, you know. They were good friends in college, they've not met each other for a long time, five, six years, now they come together, they're all together. Then they saw live music was going on, somebody was playing an instrument. It looked vaguely familiar. All of them knew what it is, but they couldn't figure out the name. So they called the waiter and said, can you go and find out what is he playing? So waiter went, came back and said, it's a violin. <laughs> that means you're just hearing things, you're not listening. If you genuinely listen, 
then you will understand, I have never expressed one opinion about anything, because I have never formed one in my mind. If I see something, I say this is a fact right now, this may have this, this, this kind of consequence. Right now, well, if I say, probably we need some more lockdown, this is not my opinion, there are enough facts supporting that, but still it's a decision we should take measuring various realities, whether it's going to work for us or work against us, can we afford it or not, this is a decision we take. If we decide for lockdown or if we decide against it, both will not be a perfect decision, this we already know. But it's a judgment, no judgment is perfect. But weighing things according to our priorities, we arrive at a judgment. If you think that is my opinion, that suppose I say more weeks of lockdown, oh, this is your opinion, we don't like it, this is not my opinion. Removing the lockdown is one option, extending the lockdown, another option. We have to weigh losses and profits of this, pros and cons of this and arrive at something. It is always a compromise. How much compromise? There always can be a debate. What I think, you may think it's not so, but this is not about me concretizing opinions about anything, especially about the nebulous political uh, happenings in the country, very difficult for anybody to form an opinion, but I want you to understand this, I've lived my life with great discipline not to form opinions about anybody around me. Those people who've been around me for twenty, twenty-five years, I still don't have an opinion about them. I still look at them fresh as they are today. There have been many things to me, many, many pluses, few minuses, there have been many things to me. But today if I see them, I see them as they are. Based on that, what evolves, how to that situation evolves. This takes a lot of discipline and inner work to not arrive at any opinion. So when it comes to the spiritual dimension with me and you, you must listen, not hear. If I ask you what is playing, you say violin. You think I thought it's a piano or something? So, anyway, I don't know how left you are, I'm seriously left. Because, see the yoga center is uh, is a commune in a way, it's a... it's a communist arrangement. Nobody is asking how much do you have. Nobody is asking you what is your religion, what is your caste, where do you come from, who is your father. I don't even care if you don't have one. No, just in case you're one of them. <laughs> Even if you're that, we will just treat you like we treat you... treat everybody else. In case you rise and show some special qualities, we will honor that also. But otherwise, even if you came from above, we still... still treat you the same. If this is not left, what else is? This is absolute left. You, I don't think you are living like that. I'm sure you're living in your own home, talking left philosophy. But if somebody asks you to give away your phone to somebody who doesn't have one, not give away, alternate days, you know, share it with your neighbor. Because after all, you're a party member maybe, try and see. <laughs> Here we do such things very effortlessly. So. Don't get into this thing and uh, somehow you come on to the spiritual path, stay on the track. Don't go left and fall off or don't go right and fall off. I hope you don't think I'm right. <laughs> you definitely can't say I am right wing. It takes two wings to fly. I have both the wings, I flap as it is necessary. <laughs> mm -hmm. The next question.
is from Siddharth Wazir. Sadhguru, Jammu and Kashmir need your presence so that people can focus on something different from the regional issues. Do you have any plans to set foot here? Well, I have no issues with Jammu and Kashmir. People have been inviting me to come and golf in the Srinagar golf course. <laughs> Some of the army officers said, Sadhguru, you come, we will provide you all the security. And I said, no, I don't want to come where twenty-five people have to walk around trying to take care of my security, I don't want to do that to you. When everything is fine, I will come. Right now you go there, a whole lot of people are going there because they are interested in a photo op. The situation in Kashmir is not at ripe to do spiritual work, online we can provide. To go there and to actually do spiritual kind of activity, it's just a photo op. It's not a real thing, because it is in a certain state of boil, it needs to cool down. In this state of boil, if you go there, you will only instigate certain fo forces to further go crazy about it. They will become even more insecure and probably get more violent and take that violence out. Maybe I'll be well protected, but they will take it out on somebody else. Those who attended the satsang, they may get killed. Yes, they will, probably. So I don't want to ca cause such disruptions. About... it'll be crazy to enter that situation now. It will be just trying to take advantage of something that's happening there, which I will never do. We will not go to Jammu and Kashmir unless we anonymously motorcycle. We may do. But will we go there to conduct mega events? No, I will not do that. They can always access our material free of cost uh, online. And if you happen to be a militant or a terrorist or in some way extreme, we offer inner engineering online free of cost for you. <laughs> Tools for transformation. Because... because I want you to understand, there are various aspects to it, I'm not trying to make fun of it. Everybody believes what they believe and they think they're doing the right thing. You always think the other person is crazy. This happened. Two white uniformed guards, came to a local farm in Tennessee and asked the farmer, see, uh, a total lunatic has escaped from an institution, we are looking out for him, did you happen to see him? The farmer asked, what does he look like? They said he's uh, very short and thin and he weighs uh, 295 pounds. The farmer said, what? He's short and thin and weighs 295 pounds? Have we told you he's crazy? So, you never know who is crazy, all right? So this is not taking a call on somebody is wrong, we are right, that's not about it. Right now, the important thing is to function and to work where you can produce maximum impact because life is a brief amount of time and energy. It's a limited amount of time and energy. Every human being should understand this. You must always work in a space where you can create maximum impact. Are you choosing an easy place to work? No, where there is maximum impact. Maximum impact can be measured in so many different ways, but definitely not in terms of whether it's easy or difficult to work there. That's not the point. Can you produce some impact or is it just waste of time and energy? That is a call that everybody has to take. 
I have taken that call, I will not go into war zones and th these kind of situations, famines, where people go and give some fruits, bananas, oranges and take pictures and put it in the newspaper. I will not do such things, it's too obscene for me. I will never do such things where there is war, where there is death. We will come and say, I'm going to spe to teach spirituality to you. It doesn't work like that. I need people who have a few things settled in their life and willing to focus on something more profound or a higher dimension, only then I can work with them. Otherwise, it's a spiritual photo op I don't need. Hmm? I look spiritual enough, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Yoga, yoga, yogeshwaraya Bhūta Bhūta Bhūte Swaraya Kāla Kāla Kāle Swaraya Shiva Shiva Sarveshwaraya Shambho Shambho Maha Hey